I wanted to talk about the four different types of dangerous personality types. Have you guys read uh, Joe Navarro's book, Dangerous Personalities? Twice. Oh, we have we have a captive audience. And Moff, I see your head nodding. You've you've got it. Jaron, did you get a chance to go through it? No, I haven't. I'll check it out though. I'm, I am familiar with them because you know we're we're all in the game in our own yeah. respective regard, and you do come across them. It's yeah. So let's talk about you know the dangerous personality types, and I don't want to keep it narrow to just you know like the ladies because I mean there are a lot of douchebag dudes out there that I've dealt with over the years that you gotta try to identify as quickly as possible. And these are really just the dark triad traits, but he adds an extra one on. Um, which were the four traits again? I haven't. It's it's been a couple of years since I read his book. So number. Key idea. Oh, that's a key idea. Let me see the types he's got here. Key idea. Narcissistic. Emotionally paranoid personalities. Unstable. Yeah, those are the ones. Those are, that's what it is. It's narcissism. It's emotionally predatory, unstable, yeah. predatory, and uh, paranoid. Yeah. Um, so I thought this was organized in a different article. I got the wrong one then. My bad. Anyway. Um, so dangerous personalities. Can you guys maybe like take a couple of minutes and spill some personal experience on people that you've interacted with over the years. Well, n not, not people like, I don't want to hear 20 different stories from everybody, but like one story that stands out where you dealt with a dangerous personality, whether it was a dude or a chick and you not paying attention to red flags or what they were telling you when you were dealing with them caused, you know, in insert havoc. Like, but just to still it down, like I want to sanitize it. I don't want like 10 minute explanations here. So um, 50 Shades, I'll let you go first. Do you have a story for us? Yeah, see where Moff is sitting right now? Yeah. About four blocks from there, I had to steal my car back from a luxury apartment building. I had to go like James Bond with Rob and steal my car out of the building because of a cray cray unstable. And, you know, I, I, I ignored red flags. Somebody was hyper nice to begin with pedestalized me this everything was a chick was or a dude a chick you know everything was great about me <laughs> and, and and all i done was cross one line and i i was dirt on her shoe and literally had to sneak in and get my car out of the underground parking garage okay and and why did you ignore the red flags like what were the red flags that you saw I mean, I, again, again, extremely nice, way over the top, nice, um, love bombing. You know, everything that is in that book, um, the four, you know, the, the four dangerous personalities yeah. that he lists. It's it's there. It's one of the best books you've recommended. And yeah. As I said earlier, over we we tend to overcomplicate stuff when we should just keep it simple. That this I should be able to get this guy on a podcast. Like if I reach yeah. out to him. I should be able to get him on because he's got some really good insight. I mean, I when I was listening to the book, there were so many times where I was like, oh, my God, that's, you know, so-and-so. Or it's like, you know, you get to like another segment of the book. It's like that's so, you know, it just resonates so strong because he like hits it so hard. But, um, yeah, I mean, you don't listen to it. You could end up like Fifty Shades and have to go steal your car back. from. How did she lock it up, by the way? Like, how did she end up with it in well, her possession where you had to steal it back? I, I was a guest in the building for the weekend. So okay. I parked it in the underground parking garage and she wanted a situation where she wanted me to come back and apologize and was going to let me have it, uh, you know, like blast at me for being the whatever I am. What and did you do to offend her so badly that she wanted to steal your car? Went out raging with the guys and you never came home. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you went out and, with the boys and then she took your car hostage. Yeah. And then were Rob, you there for this month? No. Okay. So then Bert was Rob, though, right? Yeah, he was. He pulled okay. up outside in his car laughing while I went in and being my personality, I knew the doorman of the building. He's like, Hey Irish man. I said, Yeah, hey man, let me in. I'm just going downstairs and went in, jumped to my car and skidded out of the garage just like a Bond movie. Nice. You know? Nice. A little bit of charisma pays off, doesn't it? Yep. Moff, what do you got for us, buddy? What's your story? Well, this one was lucky that um, this happened a little bit later after it was already red pilled. So I was able to, and I already read the book by Joe Navarro. So I was, I was able to kind of see the warning signs very early. But I was on a trip with a handful of guys, uh, more than a handful. Maybe it was about, you know, it was kind of like a men's retreat. Um, it wasn't involved with anything, you know, 1% or, or your community. But uh, we had a moment where, you know, come to the end of the trip, 
uh, everyone kind of sits around and shares their experiences and what they've got out of the week or the weekend or whatever it might be. And this guy was actually a local, so he didn't much participate in the activities, but he would show up to this. And so we kind of gave him the floor and gave him a couple of minutes. And from his tone, his behavior, his body language, the way he even moved his hands when he spoke, and even kind of like his eyes as they sort of darted around the room, uh, super, super uncomfortable. Uh, I had multiple guys come up to me after the fact that say, hey, look, if this person were to come on another trip again that we were to do, if he's going to be a part of this, I would not feel physically safe or I would not feel like I would want to be around this person in any sort of environment where guns were involved or anything that would be potentially dangerous. Uh, so you know, there, there are things that you can say. I, I, would, I would call that you know, emotionally unstable. Everything he said was just said with a certain level of vitriol and venom, and mm. you could just feel the anger coming off of him. Uh, and it was it, some some guy, some guy made a joke. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it's like he and he was talking a lot about how he was you know not great with women and how he had not gotten laid in a long time. And somebody during it actually texted me and said, "This guy's like if Charles Manson was bad with chicks." <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what it's like. Um, so, you know, we had some conversations with the guy. We kind, we sort of said, hey, we're going to kindly ask you not to return to this sort of thing. And uh, it didn't quite get ugly, and that was great. Uh, cooler heads prevailed eventually. But uh, luckily, nobody was hurt or nothing really happened. But you could spot the warning signs right away. Yeah. Um, Jaron, you got a, a crazy, da- dangerous personality type story? I do. I posted about her before. My my BPD chick. I know in uh, the top one percent forum, every now and then the term BPD or like the narcissistic personality disorder comes up, and I've alluded to mine a couple of times. She was a girl. Um, so I'm in Mexico right now. I went to college down here like 15, got 17 years ago. Actually, I'm getting older. And she went to university with me there. And then fast forward whatever many years it was, I was living in California before this in San Diego. So she somehow made it to San Diego too. She reached out to me, tracked me down. So like, hey, you know, you're that guy from the university. We never really knew each other, but started hanging out, started dating, um, and immediately did love bombing. Like, oh my God, she'd say things like, you're a Greek god. You're like a statue. And I'm just, it, even in my head, I, I should have known better because I'm like, that's weird. Like no one's ever told me that before. That's something you, it felt nice. Like it feeds your ego. Uh, but in my head, I was like, all right, that's kind of weird. But you know what? The- Let me just stop you there Go for ahead. a sec because that's a really, really important point. When women act completely unconventional from the norm and they love bomb you big time. Like just pray, like you're a Greek God, like look at you, like you're an Adonis. Uh, you're the best sex I ever had. Like, okay, mm-hmm. let's be honest. I mean, we've all heard that at some point, but <laughs> you get I'm the point, pretty right? Lazy. Yeah, I know. I was. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> throwing, throwing hardcore praise and admiration. I think that's, if I'm not mistaken, that's one of the key, uh, signs of somebody with a borderline personality disorder yep. and then they tend to go hot to cold like was this a hot cold exchange for you yeah she loved bomb me at first i'd say probably the first couple of weeks or so um and then it and then it progressively got a little worse and it it becomes an addiction because you want to get back to that point you're like yeah. all right like if i just get it's my like a drug like you want to hear it again it is yeah it's like if if i just do what it is i need to do i can keep doing that but they're really good they gaslight you too which they'll say like, oh, the sky's blue. You're like, oh yeah, it's a beautiful day. The sky's blue. And they're like, what are you talking about? The sky's gray. It kind of like our mainstream media does now. Uh, Mm -hmm. I I, I, I won't go too much into detail there, but where they'll say things that are obviously not true. And you're like, well, what's going on? Eventually start questioning yourself. Like, am I, am I crazy here? Like what the hell? Um, And then it's slowly degraded. It got worse and worse her behavior. Like one day, I think back when I used to clean my own houses, I was like cleaning the bathroom or something. And she bought like a little seashell, like soap holder uh, that we put next to the sink. So I put it down below the sink. because I wanted to clear off the counters and let them dry and not leave water spots or whatever. Pretty innocuous, pretty minor detail. She came and flipped out like to the point she like threw her arms out and she's like, Jared! and she'd always, she always yell my name too. She, she was a Mexican girl. So she would always be like, Jared! And my friends in San Diego still make fun of me. Like, if, if we show up in public somewhere and I can't quite see them, they're like, they'll, they'll yell, John in! And uh, so this chick was, th- and I was like, all right, there's something up with her. Like, it's definitely not me. It got worse. Like, we had a skunk in the yard for a while. 
And I was like, oh, well, it's California. We'll call somebody <laughs> okay. here to come get it. And then uh, after a couple of days, I'm like, hey, Flora, the, 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 that skunk must have left. Let me get you and to the she, point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So she told me she told me she murdered the skunk. And at that point, I was like, all right, all right, this girl's nuts. And then she got really into like, this was in the Jody area. Hey, thing was going she on. murdered she, a skunk? Oh, she poisoned him. <laughs> Which most, most girls don't poison a skunk. Or animals in general, of, right? Yeah. Like normally, like they'll let animal control come and get them. This is so the that, this is the kind of chick when you come home. There's a couple of bunnies boiling in your pot, or there's a horse's exactly, head in your bed yeah. when you wake up in the morning. So, Rich, uh, there, so, there needs to be Darren. There needs to be an entire show on your skunk murderer. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I haven't told the story in so long. It is funny thinking about it now. It's ridiculous. Dude, I've heard um, some crazy shit, but not a skunk murderer. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I was like, what happened to the skunk? She's like, oh, I poisoned him. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I thought she was, I actually, I think I remember back. I think she was full of crap. I'm like, okay, whatever. Like Animal Patrol must have came and gotten him. Um, and then eventually the Jody Arias thing was going on. That was like the big cultural talk, kind of like this Amber Heard thing to bring it all home. And then she started getting really, really into that. Eventually, at one point, my passport disappeared. And then I started getting like the heebie-jeebies. She, <laughs> she started telling me like, oh, things like, you don't know who I know. And if you don't treat me right, you know, my oh, cousins yeah. are going to come get so, you. And I'm like, all right, so we're done. We're how done. many months or weeks in was that? Like, like, how long did you date this one for? It didn't take too long. It was like three or four months. Like, it started off real good. And then it went downhill pretty quick. Let, but... me, let me share a couple stories. So very very short dating experience with this chick saw her like two or three times tops i mean like the only reason why i kept seeing her after i found out she was crazy was because she's hot i'm like you know let's just keep going we'll see where this goes right let's see how crazy this bitch really is she <laughs> on the, on the very first date that i met her a couple coffees go for a stroll she, you know shoot the shit and she goes have you ever been in the back of a cop car and I'm like, that's a totally random question to ask somebody on a first date for out of no fucking where, right? And I was like, wait, have you ever been in the back of a cop car? And that's when she started spilling the beans, right? On her little past history with her ex-boyfriend. What, they were the a woman fight, does, right? They were like fist fighting, weren't they? Like, well, what a woman does in her past is generally going to happen, you know, in the future, right? And, and, she'll bring it out of you, even if you're not a violent guy. Yeah, like, I started and, getting those urges, like, like when start, I wanted to, like, hang yeah. on a sec. So she started telling the story about how you know she ended up in the back of a cop car because she went to go to her boyfriend's house and he didn't want her to come in, so he locked the door, and then she proceeded to pick up like. He had firewood stacked at the side of his house. So she pick up like a log and start whipping it at the door. A couple of them went through the window. So shattered the front glass of the house. He calls the cops. She's in the back of the cop car. This chick proceeded to blow up my phone for like two days after that. Okay. Like, the, like red flags. The random uh, dude that's like on the Reddit thing going, my girlfriend's going to Vegas and talking to guys and texting them. Is everything okay? Like that nerd. That's that's a typical guy that'll just completely ignore that and they'll accept the fact that, you know, he's with a complete nightmare and he's going to invite more problems and chaos into his life. All you have to do is get good at finding spotting that and you have a much better experience with women. Am I not correct here guys or am I wrong? I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. No, that book that book you recommended, Rich, was it's it was a big eye opener for me and it allowed me to call girls that I would not have called or cut out. Like, um, I think I told Moff the story. I, I hooked up with a former fitness instructor like 22 years ago in New York. And we, we circled back and we got in touch with each other. You guys know what I'm like, the banter that I do. And I sent her the picture of you guys have seen me in Miami dressed like, you know, a, a, a Cuban drug dealer or something. I, you know, I went over the top. But, but you know, it, it's, it's, it's a cool pick. And I sent her that. And what, this girl now was texting me for like a week, two weeks. You know, we were flirting, we were doing all this stuff and back and forth. And we were supposed to meet on a Friday um, at a winery. And this was a Wednesday. And we started texting back and forth and I sent her that picture. And within two or three texts, she spiraled into projecting every type of crazy personality onto me that I was a narcissist. I was a control freak. I was a what? And in the past, if I hadn't become part of this group or become aware I would have tried to go, oh, no, no, I'm this, I'm that. And I would have apologized my way out of it. Instead, mm -hmm. I just went, block, delete, gone. Yep. Simple, guys. It's very, very simple. As soon as you identify a dangerous check, you move on. The only guys that tolerate it are those with little to no options. When you have more options, when your SMV is higher, 
when you're a higher value guy, you're going to throw away nightmares and not invite them into your life to create the chaos that they that they will inevitably bring. It's going to happen, okay, dude? You're talking to a chick and she's like, you ever been in the back of a cop car? And she's like, well, I have, and here's why. It's like, okay, you know right then and there. It's like, no, no more date. Like maybe... You, if you want to go to a, a crazy place, go to friends with benefits, but at, like nothing more. That's it. Distance, distance, lots of it too. Um, and one thing to ahead. note on that is, um, as you get better at your game, like I've stepped back and noticed that these types of girls don't even come onto my radar anymore. So it could be a thing of like me projecting a part of me that pushes them away. Or I think it's more so they, it's kind of like any sort of victimizer or criminal or anything. They go after an easy target, like the house that's unlocked and there's no mm -hmm. guard dogs and lights are on, like inviting them to come in. Like, I think guys do a lot of the same thing, especially when you're in like a, like a down phase in your life or you're maybe not where you want to be. Um, you make yourself a mark. Whereas now um, I've noticed that those types of personalities don't even really come onto my radar every now and then. Like if it's like a quick hookup or something, something in my head would be like, Oh, there's something off of this girl. But if I'm not going to see her again, like it never gets to that point anymore. And yeah, those if you're types finding of girls, wildlife again, dead around. in your backyard, there's something going on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a red flag guys. That's, that's a red flag. Hey guys, I really hope that you enjoyed that short clip. If you did consider supporting the creation of content by checking out my supplement line pinned in the top comment below of this video in the comments, there's a link to the unpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop. Uh, when you click through, you'll be able to land over here and the entire lineup is broken down by category that it performs best in estrogen metabolism, fat burning, your foundational essentials for health, immune health, performance, and testosterone support. If you check out with coupon code ALPHA10, you'll get 10% off on your first order. There's also the option to use the subscribe and save model where regular shipments will be sent over to you on a regular basis, and that gives you a little bit of a discount, and your supplement facts are always broken down over here. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have an awesome day. And again, check out that link. It's pinned in the top comment below in this video. Peace out.